us. Hallelujah. We serve the one and only true and living God. There is no other God beside him, no other God that can compare with him. He is the only God. Hallelujah. God and welcome to Bible class. Call someone and tell them that Perfecting Church Bible class is on the air. And again, we never take advantage of the fact that you, you view us and we appreciate your presence here today. We know that God is going to speak to you out of his word, so we want you to prepare. Get your pens, your iPads, your paper, your pads, whatever you're going to write in that you might uh, maintain the notes and maintain what is said. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, it is the entrance of thy word that bringeth light and life, and we pray that the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ would shine bright. We pray that you would just anoint our lips, give us articulation of speech, clarity of thought, that we might declare the counsel of God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Let the anointing of the teacher be upon us, and we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Come on and give God praise. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 
we praise God for his kindness and his faithfulness unto us. Hallelujah. And we love to praise God. We should always proceed uh, our, our worship with a, a word, a song, a praise, a hymn, a spiritual song. And we praise God for that opportunity. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I prove him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more and more. Let's go to Colossians, the fourth chapter. I really want to read to you the fourth through the 18th verse. I'm sorry, the seventh through the 18th verse, which would conclude the chapter. But I'll probably stop at the 10th verse. So we'll start at the seventh verse and we'll conclude at the 10th verse, uh, next week we will pick up and we'll continue to do what we're doing now, but I just want to give, give each individual their fair time. If you have Colossians 4 and 7, hear the beginning of the reading of God's word. All my state shall Tychius declare unto you, who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he might know your state and comfort your hearts. With, on with Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they shall make known unto you all things which are done here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you, and Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom ye receive commandments. If he come unto you, receive him. So far the text. If I were title uh, the lesson this week, it would be the helpers of Paul. The helpers of Paul. I think this lesson is so important because a lot of times people are interested in their own fame, um, their own individual ministry. I, I don't want to sound uh, too harsh here, but folk are so wrapped up in themselves they wouldn't mind if I stopped my ministry to, to start theirs. Um, and it's so important for us to understand the necessity of working together. 
it's not about uh, my show. It's not about my ministry. It's not about my preaching. It's not about my teaching. It's what does the body of Christ need? And how do we fit in the body of Christ? Hallelujah. Paul says in Ephesians that we are to be fitly, well in Corinthians he says, fitly joined together. Uh, in Ephesians he talks about the body being compacted together and every joint supplying. So we need each other. And uh, as he writes so prolifically in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, he says that what if the body were all seeing? Where would the hearing be? You know, God has placed us in the body as it pleased him. And I know uh, so many people, it, it saddens me because uh, my ministry and what I'm supposed to do and, and their name has to be up in lights. And they do so many crazy things, not understanding that in order for us to be proficient, in order for us to maximize what God is doing with us, we need one another. Uh, many of you uh, comment on how you enjoy our Bible class and our church services. It's not just because I'm preaching, because you would not be able to hear me if it wasn't for these camera persons and the folk that are directing this or the sound persons or the, 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 the lighting. All of this plays together, all the musicians. We're all in this together to present something. Hallelujah. And if, if I'm sitting there saying, well, it's all about me, it's all about me, let them lights go out and you're not going to see me. And so often in ministry, we are so focused on ourselves until we offend or we abuse our help. The helpers of Paul. The place from which this letter is written seems to have been Rome during Paul's first imprisonment there. According to Acts 28, 30, and 31, and Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence no man forbidding him. Now let's unpack these two verses. When it states that uh, he dwelt in his own hired house, it meant that Paul was still under custody. He was still in prison. Glory to God. And notice that it says also that he could only receive those that came to visit him. It is not stated that he had the luxury of leaving or visiting the synagogues in those areas or anywhere else. But he did enjoy the uninterrupted exercise of his ministry and all the liberty that a guarded man could have. Now, these are pretty extenuating circumstances that under these circumstances, one can either find reason to complain or to make good of the situation one finds themselves in. Paul could have said, Lord, if I got to preach, I'm not preaching till I'm out on my own. 
I'm not preaching till I can walk to the nearest synagogue or go to the nearest house or go to the nearest church building. But for two years, he's confined. And yet, in the confinement, he preaches. And he preaches the kingdom. When you lack the freedoms to achieve a goal or purpose, the task does not become impossible because it becomes difficult. But it does require you to find and to utilize help. Somebody say help. Help is crucial. And I, I need us to understand the interdependence that we have on each other as believers. That's the focus of this. And I'm glad, I'm, I'm really happy that the Bible uses names, names of real people that lived during this time. Sometimes it's so difficult for me to just stay calm because I get excited. You see, no matter where you find yourself, God can use you if you're willing to be a helper. I try to teach our men here at Perfecting Church that your first calling is in the second position. Some people want to come out just, just running everything. And you're going to find something in this lesson here. Glory to God. Help is crucial. So let's explore some of the help that Paul had available to him. In verse 7, he says, All my state shall Tychius declare unto you, who is a beloved brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. Glory to God. His name, Tychius, means fortuitiveness or fortune. Tychius is a native of Asia Minor, and he traveled with the Apostle Paul on his third missionary journey. It was Tychius, along with Onesimus, another person I'll, I'll get to in a moment, that carried the epistle from Rome to Colossae. Paul is imprisoned, and yet he has helpers so that he could dictate a letter and have the ability to have folk that would take it from his hired house his guarded house to whatever city it needed to get to because Paul is going nowhere. He wouldn't be able to continue to reach all of these churches if he did not have help. The job of Tychius was to relate to the church Paul's condition and also to let the Apostle Paul know how the church was faring and to comfort the hearts of the saints. Ooh, that's a lesson in itself. You know, the, one of the problems I have with how uh, social media is used and the platform is used, it's used to tear people down. It's used to report whether true or false. They just lie, just make up stuff. Glory to God. A few weeks ago, I was in my office in, at Perfecting Church Toledo, and 
the elder walked in. He said, Pastor, are you okay? I said, yes. He said, uh, have, have you heard? I said, heard what? He said, Pastor McClurkin. We, I said, what about him? He, he, the man said it just came on social media. He died. I looked up. I said, Pastor McClurkin is not dead. One, I just talked to him last night, but he's not going. Why would he be dead? And they came back in and said, one person said it, one person said it. Then I said, what, what are you looking at? I looked on YouTube. Now, mind you, he's in his 20th year celebration. He's on television live preaching, and they're talking about he's dead. I looked it up, and it had him with a neck brace on in a hospital bed with uh, his eyes closed and the letters R.I.P., rest in peace. And it had under there, we regret to announce the passing of Donnie McClurkin. And then you had to put the inform thing and it went down, Donnie, gospel great Donnie McClurkin's mother and sister. I said, now, why would, you, why would you do this? They're quick to promote nonsense. They're quick to give their opinion on a preacher or what he should do. I, I, you know, I heard them talking about, they showed me uh, where folk had comments because Bishop Morton rebuked the musician. He should have rebuked him. Here I'm a, what would I look like right here preaching and somebody just walk past? That's disrespectful. But no, you're going to write, he shouldn't have, he's absolutely, you ain't the pastor of that church. And so what happens is it's used improperly. Just because you have a button and can type don't mean you need to say everything that come to your mind. And you certainly don't need to push sin. The Bible says even a fool is considered wise if he hold his peace. So it's used improperly. Can you imagine what they would have been saying about the Apostle Paul if he's in prison and he's sending letters to the church? Why don't he get out of prison first? Because we don't understand the mind of God. Lord, I thank you. And so you have to be careful if God has sent you to aid someone, to help someone, then you don't exploit their weakness. You help it. Hallelujah. There to comfort the hearts of the church, not make them more anxious, not make them worry, but to comfort their hearts. Hallelujah. Tychus was also sent to Ephesus. In Ephesians 6.21, listen to what the Apostle Paul says, but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do Ephesians 6, 21, Paul says, so that you'll know my affairs, so that you'll know that I'm communicating with you where I am, what I'm doing, how I do. Tychius, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things. History tells us that Tychius took the dictation from the Apostle Paul and subscribed letter, uh, 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 took the dictation from the Apostle Paul and subscribed the letter to the church at Ephesus. Tradition also holds that Tychius died as a martyr.
Paul also, there is the possibility that Tychius was also sent to Crete, according to Titus 3 and 12. Pastor Winans, why are you saying this? I'm saying this because we give a lot of focus to the Apostle Paul, and he should get it. We talk about how he wrote, uh, I think it's 13 epistles. He is the apostle of the Gentiles. He has the credit of writing most of the New Testament. But he did not do it alone. It would not have happened if he did not have help, help. That's what he needed. Help. In Colossians, he says in that um, ninth verse, with Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother who is one of you, they shall make known unto you all things which are done here. Onesimus. His name means profitable. His history is that Onesimus was a runaway slave or servant from the house of Philemon. It is believed that Onesimus fled to Rome as a sinner and ran into the gospel through the preaching of Paul in Rome. And as Paul records it in Philemon 1, there's only one chapter in Philemon, Philemon 1, and the 10th and 11th verse, it says this, I beseech thee for my son Onesimus whom I have begotten in my bonds. Oh, what a wonderful story. Here is a man that fled from his master, took some things that he should not have taken, gets to Rome, and he's a free man now. Onesimus is free, and he runs into a man that is incarcerated by the name of Paul. I'm incarcerated, but I'm preaching a gospel of liberty. Well, it was Paul that writes in Corinthians, he says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I may be in a cell, but because I have Jesus, I'm free. Mm. I know the world doesn't understand that type of freedom. As a matter of fact, they look at the church and they think that if you're in the church, you're locked up, you're tied up, you're just, you're just permitted from doing, uh, you're not permitted to do anything, you just, it's just a rough life. It's not rough! When you live under the auspices of the Holy Spirit, when you recognize that God is in control, and even though he was in a hired house, even though he had a guard and could not go and come as he pleased, pleased it was the gospel of freedom that Onesimus ran into. And Paul says, I got him while I was incarcerated. He's a son of mine, and I begot him in my bonds. He writes this letter to Philemon. He says, Whom I have begotten in my bonds, which in times past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. You see, when God changes you, when you receive Jesus, there should be a change in your life. 
Whereas you were unprofitable, now you become profitable. You become profitable to the kingdom. That's the reason you shouldn't sit at home and allow the enemy to make you think that you're insignificant or that you don't matter. You need to stand up and say, I am profitable to the kingdom of God. God saved me for a reason. God gave me a gift and a calling. In Philippians, he tells us in the second chapter to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both the will and the do of his good pleasure. God would not tell you to work out your salvation if he didn't give you anything to work with. Now, you don't have to work to get salvation. But after you gain salvation, there's a work for you to do. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Onesimus is made profitable because he has received Jesus. And not only did he receive Jesus, but he became a helper of the Apostle Paul. As a matter of fact, that letter to Philemon was written by Onesimus, dictated by Paul. And Paul said, he might have been uh, something terrible when he left your house. But let me say this. I, I didn't want to do it, but let's, let's go there. Let's go to Philemon. Let me, it's just some interesting stuff that I want to that I want you to see. I don't want you to, to miss out on this because so many of us are brooding over our past. We feel because we have a past or because we did something in our past that somehow God cannot use us. But this letter, the epistle of Paul to Philemon, he writes it to him and listen to what he says in the 12th uh, verse. Whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him that is mine own bowels, whom I would have retained with me that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. Listen to what he says now. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. In other words, I want you to receive this man with an open heart. Forget about what he did to you in the past. Forget about that he owed you some manual labor. For, for perhaps, in the 15th verse, for perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou shouldest receive him forever. Lord, have mercy. He said, maybe he had to leave so that when he gets back, you'll be straight enough so he doesn't have to leave again. Not now as a servant, but above a servant. Oh, come on. I don't want you to take him back. You owe me this and you, nope. I want you to recognize he's much more than a servant and I want you to receive him as a brother. Lord, have mercy. We get something on somebody and uh, we're going to hold it. You need to let that go. Not as a servant, but above a servant. A brother beloved, especially to me. But how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So you have some people say, I love him in the Lord, but I ain't got to do nothing with him. No, that, that ain't what we're working on. We ain't working on a separatist gospel. You just stay across the way. I don't want to have nothing. To, no, we got to see their profitability in the flesh and in the Lord. I don't hear nobody talking to me. He goes further. And, and I love the way he pushes it because he certainly is trying to straighten Philemon out. 
I'm not trying to say that Onesimus did everything right because he wasn't saved. I begot him in my bonds. He became a son while I was in jail. But watch this. Watch, us, watch how he pushes it. 17th verse. If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. Oh, Paul, Paul went on it now. He, he laid it down. He said, if I'm your partner, Philemon, then I want you to receive Onesimus like you would receive me. So often we are absolutely guilty of receiving people we like and pushing away the help. He was a helper. And Paul said, he's a helper to me. So if I'm your partner, then I want you to receive him like you receive me. And watch this. If he hath wronged thee or oweth thee ought, put that on my account. I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I will repay it. But now, albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest me, even thine own self besides. Now, I ain't going to bring that up. I'm not going to bring up how much you owe me for me. I will repay it. If you want to get paid how uh, Onesimus wronged you, I'll do it. Why? Because he is a helper. That's pretty powerful. And the Apostle Paul says, I'm going to pay his debt. That means he meant something to the Apostle Paul. Glory to God. Let's go to verse 10 of Colossians. Four, it says, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you. And Mark, sister son to Barnabas, touching whom ye received commandments. If he come unto you, receive him. Now, Aristarchus, his name means best ruling. Best ruling. Aristarchus is in Macedonius. He's actually from Thessalonica. We find this out in Acts 19 and 29, where it reads, the whole of the city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. It is also confirmed in Acts 27 and 2. And entering into a ship of a dramatidum, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one Aristarchus, a, Macedonia, a Macedonian of Thessalonica being with us. Let me make a note here. If you really want to find out if someone is with you, let their life be placed in peril because of you. Then you'll know. Everyone wants to travel, but how many want to suffer? I've had. <laughs> I've had people say, no, I don't, I don't want to go there. It's too dangerous. <laughs> But we're going to preach. We're going under. Nah, nah, that's all right. Let me know when you're here. And, and, and folk want to choose where they want to go, and we'll get to that in a moment. But to, to, to understand the context of what I just read, Paul had preached in Ephesus, and the folk in Ephesus 
followed him to where he was. <laughs> and they came in, and, and, and Paul wasn't there, but Gaius and Aristarchus were, and they said, these are the men that's with Paul. And they grabbed them and pushed them into a the theater and began to make a, a, a tumult as to wanting to tell them the man what you're talking about. This man is preaching against uh, Diana of Ephesus, and we know she is the queen of heaven. And he tells everybody that they can't serve but the God uh, Jesus, and he's messing with our living, and they wanted to kill him. And yet, Aristarchus, after he got out of that, continued to travel with Paul. Even after being caught in the crossfire of Paul's ministry. See, when you've been called to help, you can't let people talk you out of helping. They'll do it so sly. You helping him, you ought to be doing something for yourself. I am doing something for myself when I'm helping. Glory to God. And if we had a, a, an understanding of body ministry, if we really took to heart that we are to blossom where we're planted, it doesn't mean that you don't grow and that you don't get out of it. It doesn't mean that you stay there. It may mean that you do. But what it means is that I recognize I am to be a help. Thank God for the help. Now, in that verse, it talked about Aristarchus. I mean, yeah, Aristarchus. But it also talked about John Mark. And John Mark, on the other hand, joins the ministry of Barnabas and Saul in Acts 12, 25. It says, And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Now he, he, he joined the team in the 12th chapter. But in the 13th chapter, verse 13, Acts 13 and 13 says, Now when Paul and his company loose from Paphos, they came to Perga in Pamphylia. And John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. Now, say what you will to me. I understand what Paul is saying. Because when you're in the heat of ministry, one, you need to be dependable. That's what that word faithful means. You need to be dependable. As the leader, you look for your help to be faithful. Bless the name of the Lord. And faithful means I'm there even when it's inconvenient. Oh, I'm mashing on some toes. Just go on and say, ouch. You know, if you can't say amen, just say, I'll say something. Well, I, I, I'm always there. You're not always there if you're not always there. And when you have a job to do and you have help, you grow to depend on that help so that when you look for them to do something and they're gone and they, you don't even know they're gone. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Somebody say, help, help us, help us. In today's church, 
We don't want the gift of help. That's a gift. That if you go to 1 Corinthians 12, you find, you find apostle, prophet, evangelist. But if you keep looking, you're going to find the gifts of help right there in the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And when you have the gift of helps, that's what you do. You help. As a leader, you grow to depend on the help. When you have a faithful helper, you don't have to worry about certain things. Your mind can concentrate on this. Hallelujah. Your mind can concentrate on the word of God because, you know, when you come out, your help has done everything that needs to be done so that the word goes uninhibited. But um, doesn't give us the reason. But John Mark, you see him in the 12th chapter because it was at his mother's house that they were praying when Peter was put in jail. And John Mark joined this new uh, a crusade team of Barnabas and Saul because Saul was the junior preacher. Barnabas was the, was the headline. Barnabas and Saul. And they went and preached out churches, got the deputy uh, saved, or this governor saved, cursed one man, and he lost his sight for a season. And they're getting ready to go somewhere else. And, and John Mark said, you know what, I, just, I, I think I want to go home. And he got, he got on a boat and left them going to do the work, and he went back to Jerusalem. So, in the 15th chapter, after they've gone back to Jerusalem for the conclave to, to, to give an account of what has happened with the uh, Gentile churches, the 15th chapter, the 35th through the 40th verse, says, Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord, with many others also. And some days after Paul, some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Let's just go. We started these churches. We preached out these churches in these cities of May, Asia Minor. Let's just go and check on them to see how they're doing. And Barnabas determined to take with him John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul said, uh-uh. Paul thought not good to take him with him, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. You see, when you sign up, you have to recognize there's some work involved. It's not about you just cheesing, taking a picture. There's work involved. And if you don't get accustomed to the work, you're going to be disappointed. Some of us just want to wear a nice suit, get a big hat, and, but there's work involved. In ministry, I tell some people when they come to fill out an application for the church, do you really want to work for the church? Because we work here. This is not somewhere you just sashay through the halls. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. There's work involved. And for whatever reason, John Paul didn't want to do the work, and he got on a boat and went back to Jerusalem. And so Paul said, no, we don't need to take him because he left us the last time and went not with them to the work. And the contention, watch this, the contention was so sharp between them. Between who? Between Barnabas and Saul. If you read the 11th chapter of Acts, you will see that when they have prayed and fasted, that the Holy Ghost said, separate ye me Barnabas and Saul for the work. The Holy Ghost put Barnabas and Saul for the work. 
But family overrode it because Barnabas was determined to take John Mark, his nephew, and Paul said, he's not ready. He left us. And Paul, with his anointed self, and Barnabas, with his anointed self, they argued. And the Bible noted it was sharp contention between them that they departed asunder from one another. So now the Holy Ghost said, this is Paul, this is Barnabas, they're to come together. And they're working, they, 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 they're witnessing, they're getting souls saved, they're casting out devils, they're causing all kinds of problems. But because John Mark couldn't go, Barnabas said, all right, I'm going to go my way. And Paul, you go your way. That's how sharp the contention was between them. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Amazing. And yet, in this letter at Corinth, the Apostle Paul says, and Marcus, the son, the sister's son to Barnabas, the same guy that me and his uncle fell out over, I'm not mad at him. I think he's grown some now. I think now if he comes, he understands that he has to do the work. See, the problem with folk that are not corrected is that you never learn that this is not, the work of the Lord is not something that, you know, you at home and your mama let you do whatever, your daddy let you do whatever, and somebody got to pat you and, and say everything, make sure you're okay. You all right? You okay? We fighting spirits and you want to, you okay? Did you get what you wanted to eat? You all right? Everything? I, I want to make sure you okay. You okay? Get about time. Hey, who got time for that? You here to help. I don't hear nobody talking to me. See, I've got to prepare you for ministry. Not walking around here thanking you something, taking a picture and just it's me and selfies. That's a problem. But if you learn, if you take the correction, if you take the rebuke, even if you do wrong and you recognize, you know what? I was wrong. I did not have the, 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 the mentality of a servant. I didn't come to work. I came to be seen. I was right. I'm going on the boat with the Apostle Paul. Ooh, child, did you know what happened? I'm going to this hotel. I ain't never seen Greece. I'm just a, no, you know, that's not what this is about. This is about the kingdom. Hallelujah. And the only way that the Apostle Paul is going to be successful is that he has to have anointed help. We're going to continue this because unlike Mark, there's some more characters that were with Paul that didn't stay with him. We'll talk about it. Father, we thank you. I pray that you would make us helpers one of another. That we are stronger with each other. That if we stay together, if we understand the importance of our personal contribution to the overall vision, hallelujah, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you. Give us to recognize that we need one another and give us to repent if we've walked away because our feelings got hurt. Give them to know that their pastor 
Their leader needs them in the capacity that God has anointed them to be in. Let them swallow pride and come on back to work. Paul is now saluting Mark because he recognizes there's growth there. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray that your people that are listening to me now would understand their growth, that they would not allow the enemy to let them feel that they are insignificant, but that they are important to the success of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, come on and give God praise. If you don't know the Lord today, you can come to know the Lord right during this Bible class. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I give you my life for the rest of my life. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for hearing that prayer. And I pray that your presence will continue to touch them as they move in your direction. Give us to be servants because that's what you're going to call in that last day. You're going to say to them, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name, come on and give God praise. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. I want us to prepare to sow. But if you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to contact us with your contact information by sending it to salvation at perfectingchurch.org. We want to walk with you. Hallelujah. I want everyone to give. It is so important during this time. I, I notice that we began to slack because we're back in to in-person worship. We're not fully into in-person worship, but I don't want us to begin to give and watch the blessings of God and then stop after a certain period. That's how we maintain the blessings of God when we continue to give. I want everyone that can and will to sow a seed of $100 today. Pastor, it's a midweek, sir. I want everyone that can and will to sow a seed of $100 today. I feel led of the Lord to do this. I, I want you to know, I have no problems receiving offerings. You know why? Because I'm a giver. And I recognize the blessing that is giving. And I don't want you to be cheated out of what God wants to do with you and for you. So I want all of those persons that can and will to sow a seed of $100 or more. And if you don't have that, give what you have but give it as unto the Lord. I want to thank all of you that have already supported us. We are still believing God for a thousand people to sow a gift of $343 for our new roof here at Perfecting Church. Please support us. If we all come together, it will be easy to accomplish the goal. Father, we thank you we pray that you bless both gift and giver according to their faithfulness and according to their cheerfulness. For it's not as a debt I owe, but as a seed I sow. Stay tuned for the announcements. Remain in the cyber sanctuary. We are blessed to be a blessing. 
Here are four ways to give. PC, text to give. It's quick, simple, and very secure. Text perfecting to 73256. Cash app at dollar sign PC Detroit. Please add your name, address, and type of contribution in the notes. Online giving is available at www.perfectingchurch.org. Lastly, you may mail your contributions to Perfecting Church, 7616 East Nevada Street, Detroit, Michigan, 48234. God loves a cheerful giver. We pray Malachi 3 and 10 blessings upon you and your household. Thank you for your financial support to Perfecting Church. Good evening, members and friends of Perfecting Church. It is time for the Perfecting News. Minister Richard Small invites you to join the Perfecting Overcomers in our Cyber Sanctuary Thursday, July 22nd at 7 p.m. for Victory Service 2021 with guest speaker, Pastor Nathaniel Wells. Don't miss this powerful service. Remember, you have the victory. Perfecting Church's Park and Praise Service returns Sunday, July 25th at 3 p.m. All roads lead to PC for an electrifying outdoor service with dynamic singing and powerful preaching. Calling all golfers, save the date for PC's annual golf classic on Saturday, August 7th. Whether novice or experienced, we have a space for you. Come and enjoy a day of golf, lunch, and prizes. Email jscott at perfectingchurch.org for more information. Teens are welcome. Calling all youth. Get ready for The Gathering tomorrow evening on Zoom. Contact Pastor Daniel Norwood for more information. Children pre-K through 6th grade. We have something special for you this Sunday. It's The Slam Zone. If you want to have some fun, email lscott at perfectingchurch.org. See you in The Zone. Contact our offices at 313-365-3787 if you require any additional information. Have a blessed week. Hello to all of our friends and members of Perfecting Church. I want you to know that we are excited around here because we are on the road to reopening. I mean, fully. We have had our in-person worship services, but we're going to be putting all of our services back. It's going to happen in two phases. I figured since the restaurants are opening and the arenas are opening and the ballparks are opening. The church needs to reopen. It's time for the church to be open also. We're going to do it in two phases. Beginning August the 3rd, we're going to resume Tuesday 6 a.m. prayer and 11.15 a.m. Bible study. These are on Tuesdays. We're just going to start those. That is phase one. We will give updates of our final phase of reopening very soon. All of our service will still stream on our YouTube channel and the church's Facebook page. But I wanna thank you for the incredible support that you've given Perfecting Church during this time that we have been uh, really uh, exclusively on the Facebook page and the YouTube channel. And now we are excited that we're going to reopen and we want to welcome you back into the sanctuary. Look forward to the updates and I thank you for your support. Thank you for your support to Perfecting Church. I really do appreciate it. Listen, join me this Saturday. I think we had over 300 and something odd folks last week. I want everyone, let's get that number back up to 500, to 1,000. We need prayer. This is not a time to stop praying. It's a time to immerse ourselves in prayer. Join me at 510 for a powerful time of prayer. Until then, God bless you. I'll see you at the next Bible class.